Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Tour Championship Week. It's the culmination, as you know, of an incredible season, and we are excited to crown our 2023 FedEx Cup champion in just a couple days here on Sunday at East Lake. As is tradition, today is our annual State of the Tour press conference with Commissioner Jay Monahan, who's also joined by Tyler Dennis, president of the PGA Tour. We'll take some opening remarks from Jay before turning it over to questions from the media. Just as a reminder, if you could raise your hand, we'll bring a mic your way so we can get great accurate transcripts for you at the conclusion of the press conference. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jay, for some opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, and uh, welcome everybody to the 2023 Tour Championship. Uh, as Laura mentioned, I'm just going to start off and share with you my perspective uh, on this season before we get into uh, question and answers that Tyler and I are happy uh, to answer any questions that you have today. Um, but reflecting upon the season, um, there are five things that uh, really come to mind. That this week is the culmination of a remarkable season. Um, that thanks in large part to the performance of our players, the PGA Tour is in the driver's seat. Uh, that as we look to the fall, the FedEx fall in 2024, there is tremendous momentum behind the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour is leading our sport forward. And as we sit here today at the Tour Championship, uh, this represents the very best uh, of the PGA Tour. And so when you talk about the culmination of a remarkable season, um, this was a bridge year, a bridge year to the schedule that you now see for 2024, a year of designated events and full field events. And when we look back, uh, we see that new stars have emerged. Uh, we have had iconic moments. We have had staggering performances, staggering comebacks. And I think we need to look no further back than Victor's performance on Sunday uh, and Lucas's wins at the Wyndham Championship and the FedEx St. Jude Championship. 22 of 45 events uh, have been decided by one or fewer shots. Seven of the last 13 events have ended up in a playoff. The meritocracy, the difficulty of winning on the PGA Tour in the reward for the hard work that all of our players put in every single day has been front and center. And every single Sunday night when we crown a champion, it's been very obvious uh, the meaning that that has to all of our players. I would also say that when you look at our tournaments and the health of our tournaments, virtually every single tournament on the PGA Tour has grown year over year. That's been reflected uh, in the crowds and in the fan base and the following, something we're very proud of. Additionally, I'm very proud of the way that our players have embraced our fans and our fans have embraced our players. That really gets to the remarkable setting that we're walking in into here at the Tour Championship. Now, when I talk about the PGA Tour being in the driver's seat. I think it's important to think about and, and listen to uh, and contemplate the facts. So as we sit here today, you look at the PGA Tour fan base. It's larger, it's more diverse, it's more youthful, and it's more engaged than it's ever been. PGA Tour only broadcast, we've had 87 million unique viewers. When those viewers watch, they watch an average of 71 minutes per week, which is pretty extraordinary. ESPN Plus, PGA Tour Live on ESPN Plus. I think you've heard me say 25 million subscribers, 60% of those subscribers are under the age of 35. And from the Century to the BMW Championship, PGA Tour Live has been the most watched live sports content on ESPN Plus. 
Again, another testimony to the engagement of our fans. Our social media platforms, we have 14 million followers. Those 14 million followers average 31 years of age. This is now a year where we're filming season two of Full Swing on Netflix. And as we sit here today and we think about the year that's been, I think there'll be some pretty compelling content for people to watch uh, when we get to season two uh, next year. I'm particularly proud as it relates to how we're engaging our fans to the way our network partners and our media partners have evolved and innovated. You think about Max Homa at the Farmers Insurance Open, the first mic'd up interview live during play. As we sit here today, 40 players have participated in mic'd up interviews. We now have players at the completion of their rounds going up and joining our network talent, providing insights into what's happening in the field of play and what their peers uh, are experiencing or will be experiencing. You have more access to our players than we've ever seen. There are more camera angles. There's new and improved cameras. Uh, there's new and, and improved use of data in the way that we tell our stories every single week, all of which is leading to deeper consumption and greater storytelling uh, week in and week out. Additionally, when you think about our fan base and you think about the pipeline, so for the PGA Tour uh, and the PGA Tour First Tee Foundation, uh, we, we are culminating a $200 million fundraising campaign, which is going to modernize First Tee curriculum, uh, essentially provide further support to our 150 U.S.-based chapters, seven international chapters, our pathways to progression, are finding, are providing more opportunities for more diverse talent to make its way all the way up into the PGA Tour. You look at PGA Tour University and the short-term impact that's already having, as well as our commitment to PGA Tour Americas and the pipeline uh, that we're building, which will be reflected in this championship in years to come, is very, very strong. But all of that credit ultimately goes back to our players uh, and their exceptional performance uh, over the course uh, of this season. Momentum for 2024, making it to East Lake is on everybody's list at the beginning of the year. As we head into the fall, uh, our FedEx fall, players are gonna be competing for their cards. When you get to the RSM Classic, those spots 51 to 60 provide access to our two first two signature events. Um, we think it's going to be a very compelling fall. You couple that with the 30 players from, four, from the Corn Ferry Tour who will matriculate to the PGA Tour, the exciting conclusion to the DP World Tour season and the 10 players that will make their way to the PGA Tour. There's a lot of exciting golf to be played uh, after we leave here at Eastlake. But when we get to Maui and the Century, and I just want to take a minute and recognize um, you know, our team and all the great people that we've come to know in Maui and Lahaina, um, Max Navina, our tournament director, uh, he and the team um, are working every single day with the community there. We're in constant contact. I'm in contact with the governor. And you know, we hope to be a source of inspiration for the great people of Maui and Lahaina by the time that we get to, uh, to Maui in January. But this marks, this marks a, a new era because every single player that plays there starts with zero FedEx Cup points. And every single player that plays there starts with the goal of trying to get back uh, to Eastlake. And this is a year where players will be 24, where players will be competing for record prize money, uh, record bonus pools now eclipsing $500 million. We have eight signature events. And when you look at those eight signature events and you couple them with the, pl with the players and the major championships uh, in that 31 week sequence, you know, we have the equivalent of primetime matchups that other sports see as we go into 2024 that we think is a great benefit for our fans. 
at the same time, given the field size, limited field size for the signature events, early indications from players as they, as they outline their schedule for 2024 suggests that that balance that Tyler and the team have worked so hard to accomplish uh, is going to result in stronger fields across the board given the shorter season that we have. Um, that coupled with the next 10 and the swing five, being able to identify the hottest players in the season and the hottest players at that moment, giving them the opportunity to compete with those players that have qualified to play the signature events, again, is going to put us in a position uh, where we're going to have some great storylines as we go through uh, and throughout 2024. So the fact that we've had uh, our, our partners step up the way that they've stepped up uh, has, been, has been truly remarkable on that front. And again, going back, to, going back to the position that we're in, I think it's important to note from a, from a strength standpoint uh, for 24, we have $10 billion in committed sponsorship revenue, $5 billion in media rights revenue committed both through 2030. We have 49 corporate partners who are committed to us, uh, who have been committed to us for a decade uh, or longer. We have, with the signature events, companies that have stepped up to underwrite increased purse levels and to help us enhance those events. Uh, additionally, on the venture side, importantly, PGA Tour Superstores, our partner Arthur Blank, here in Atlanta, uh, we're now at 61 stores. That venture business is having another record year. When we were here a year ago, um, alongside Tiger, uh, Rory, at Mike McCarley, uh, we announced the formation of TGL. Uh, when it was announced, it was a concept. As we stand here today, it was a concept that was built on building six franchises in a technology-infused infused business model uh, with early week primetime matchups. We've now secured three franchise owners. There is a strong market for the remaining three positions. And from a player standpoint, there's more players interested uh, than we have spots available. Uh, so that's another thing that we're particularly excited about. I also think when you, when you look at 24 and you look at where we are um, and talk about momentum, um, we don't spend enough time on this, and, it's, and, and, and I think now more than ever, it's, it's so important, and that is our mission and our impact. So the PGA Tour, by the end of next year, will eclipse $4 billion raised for charity. When I was in front of you here during the COVID year of 2020, we announced that we would generate $100 million for inclusion-related initiatives by the end of, by, within 10 years. And we were going to do that with and in partnership with our tournaments. We have now surpassed that $100 million. And I would just ask each of you to follow up with our team to learn more about the organizations we're supporting, the great work that's been done and our follow through uh, on that commitment. I also, and I'm gonna come back to Eastlake in a moment, but as it relates to our impact and think about the FedEx Cup playoffs, you go to the FedEx St. Jude Championship and you listen to Rick Shadiak, uh, who runs the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The impact that the PGA Tour has had on St. Jude going back to 1972 uh, the close to the over $65 million that we've raised, but more importantly, the awareness that we have provided for their mission has helped them grow, and we are now a fabric, part of the fabric of that community and part of the fabric of that organization. To be in Chicago last week with the WGA and Evans Scholars, 1,130 scholars are now receiving four-year scholarships through the Evans Scholars program. That program continues to have an enormous impact on the 58 schools um, that Evan Scholars has a presence at. So our mission continues to, to deliver in profound ways. And also as it relates to momentum, uh, I think it's really important to, to note that if you look at the PGA Tour and you look at 
are the commitment we have from our players, from Peter Malnati to Webb Simpson to Charlie, to Charlie Hoffman to Rory McIlroy uh, and to Patrick Cantlay, those five players who, have, who serve as our player directors, the addition of Tiger Woods as our sixth player director, uh, which is effective immediate, Adam Scott serving as our PAC chair who will join our board on January 1st of this year, every single member of our PAC, the fact that if you look at the names that were on uh, the document that I received, the document saying that players want to continue to enhance their voice and represent representation within our governance, suffice to say that our athletes, I believe, when you look across sport, are more invested and engaged in the PGA Tour than athletes are in any other league. And I think that bodes very well for, for us as we move forward. In terms of the PGA Tour um, leading our sport forward, uh, again, when you go back to um, our framework agreement, we have put an end to the divisive and distracting litigation. We have uh, safeguards that are in place to put the PGA Tour in a position to control our future. And as I sit here today, I am confident that we will reach an agreement uh, that, that achieves a positive outcome for the PGA Tour and our fans. I see it, uh, and I'm certain of it. And I, I see it because when you look at our, the performance of our players, you look at the commitment of our players, our partners, our fans, um, all of our constituents, our tournaments, I feel like we're in the strongest position to be able to succeed and successfully conclude these negotiations in a way that protects the legacy of the PGA Tour on a long-term basis. Tour championship, I know I'm talking a lot here, but uh, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Um, this does represent the best in the PGA Tour. And every single player that, that uh, that is here has had a remarkable performance. Every single one of them. Uh, they've earned their way here. Uh, and they have an incredible opportunity to add to their legacies and to create um, another great moment in their respective careers. And I'm just hopeful that as we get here to Sunday, we have another exciting um, conclusion to the Tour Championship uh, at Eastlake. Uh, and I'm certain that that's what will happen. But we also, we're here in East Lake. Uh, we've played a part in transforming and revitalizing this entire community. We will generate over $5 million uh, for East Lake and purpose built communities. We're doing that thanks to the support of partners like FedEx, Coca Coke, Southern Company, uh, and Accenture. And we're doing it because there's a great man and a great family in the Cousins family that saw this. They saw this a long time ago, and we've partnered every step of the way uh, to help achieve what you see out here. And again, that comes back to the competitive strength on full display, and our impact uh, will be on full display uh, once again. So um, there's a little perspective on, on, on the PGA Tour, and uh, Tyler and I are happy to answer any questions that you have.